Hello and welcome everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in to another one of my podcasts. Uh, my name is Ellie Huang and I am a natural health practitioner in traditional Chinese medicine for over 12 years. I'm also a beauty therapist for around 20 years and I'm also now an NLP health and wellness coach. And today I'm super excited to have Angela Council with us today. Angela Council is a menopause educator who specializes in helping women embrace the changes that are happening to their body as they move through menopause transition. She's on a mission to spread the word that is possibly that is possible menopause to thrive in menopause. And this can be a time of stepping into your wisdom and falling in love with yourself and your life. Angela is a qualified naturopath and kinesiologist with almost 20 years of experience supporting women through these various stages of their life. And she ran her own successful natural therapy clinic in Sydney, the Amber Tree for 10 years, and she now continues to consult privately with clients, as well as running regular retreats, group programs, and women's circles. She hosts a popular podcast called Wise Women's Conversations, where she has an enlightening conversation with other women by providing practical advice to support women to navigate through menopause with ease. And she's also the self-established author of a book, Secret Mums Business, which reached number one on Amazon in the health and lifestyle and business categories. Angela has been featured in several magazines, television, radio programs, and many other podcasts and radio shows. So we're super excited to have Angela on today and her wise knowledge of wisdom, because yeah, this is a passionate topic of mine. I do see a lot of women from early in the menopause stage, going through fertility, through to you know, the, the post-pregnancy into having children, toddler years, and then through menopause and post-menopause. So I'm super excited to be able to ask Angela and uh, yeah, let all your listeners, um, you know, grab, get some really good tips and tricks on how we can navigate through this really important sort of um, stage of our life. So Angela, welcome. Thanks for having me, Ellie. That kind of introduction, I feel like I've been really busy for the last 20 years. I'm not sure I've been that busy, but it just seems like I've... Sometimes well, I'm sure been... you've done a lot. You've done a lot to help women and their cause. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you think, oh my God, have I done all of that in the last 20 years? It's a, it's a well, good accolade. <laughs> yes, well, it's better than not doing much. So you've done a lot to help help our cause. So welcome. So tell me a little bit more about yourself and how you got into sort of um, specialising in this topic of, of menopause and why why this field. Okay, so as you said, I'm a naturopath and I'm a kinesiologist and I'm a personalised health coach as well. And before all of that, I was actually, I worked in corporate. I was a project manager. I was in IT. I oh, it sounds a, like me. I was in IT as well. I worked in the Commonwealth Bank. I'm also a qualified accountant. So I've got a very strong corporate background, but I got to the stage and actually what happened was is I had a miscarriage at work. And that was kind of a really, it was a time for me to go, well, what is my life? What is my lifestyle, my job, my stress doing to my, my body and my health? And that's kind of sent me on a little bit of a path to discover what else there was. And I'd already been doing a little bit of um, like weekend courses, nighttime courses on nutrition, essential oils, herbs, a few things like that, just kind of playing around. And I was always had, I was always a, you know, I was a bit of a gym bunny. And so I thought, well, I'm going to go and learn a little bit more about what naturopathy is all about. And I, my contract was up, so I told my husband I was taking three months off and I was just going to spend some time just kind of recovering from the miscarriage and just kind of relaxing. I told him three months, I was thinking six. <laughs> and so I went off and I went to study to be a naturopath. Within one month, I was pregnant with my son and I never, ever went back to the corporate world and I continued on with my studies and over the years, I've worked with women in, it's the same as you, all stages of life. So when I very first started my clinic, um, my children were quite young. And so I was helping mums with new bubs. Then as my children grew older, I was helping mums with toddlers. So I was kind of always a step or so ahead of the women that I was working with. And I did a lot of fertility work. And I actually, I was an older mum. So I didn't have my first baby until I was 40 and my second at 43. So I was an older mum, wow. so which meant... By the time I finished breastfeeding, I was kind of, I was very likely, I was actually coming into my perimenopause stage mm. of life. But when I, um, about, I don't know, it seems like forever ago now, 
Um, but when my daughter was finishing, she was kind of finishing year six, I think. And I started to notice that things were changing. Things had been changing a little bit along the way. My cycle was actually fairly regular, but my moods were kind of going up and down. I couldn't understand what was going on. And then one day, it was about two days before she finished year six, and I was on the floor in tears going, what the hell am I doing with my life? Everything just seemed to be falling apart. And I didn't understand what was happening. And I kind of pulled myself together so I could get through a graduation. And I did, I got through that. And then after that, it's like, I canceled all my clients because it was the end of the year. And I only had a couple more left for the year. And I went, okay, I'm just taking some time off. I'm very good at burning out. And I've written a book about how not to burn out. And it's because mm-hmm. I'm an expert at doing it. I've done it a few times. And I was, this was more than burnout though. I'm basically... I sat on the couch and read or watched TV for nearly six weeks and I had no motivation. I had no idea what I was meant to be doing. I'd lost my purpose. My children now were in high school, so they didn't need me as much. So I was like, who the hell am I? And I started to think, what's going on? I started to realize that this actually is menopause. Um, At the time, I still had a cycle. So I still had a cycle. As I said, it was very regular. But... I never knew what menopause was all about. When I studied, they taught us how to treat hot flushes, Mm. spoke a little bit about weight, but not too much, and probably vaginal dryness. And that's probably about all they taught us that menopause was all about. They didn't really tell us. And it's not until you get to this time Mm -hmm. of life that you really understand it's not physical. Yes, you might have some physical symptoms, but there is a real change and you have the opportunity. It's, it's a, and I see it as an awakening. Mm-hmm. It's a time to step into your wise years and you have the opportunity now to make a decision as to what the next half of your life is going to be. Because we are so lucky living in the time that we live. Because yeah. if we go yeah. back a few generations, our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers were not living as long as we are right now. Mm. So we get to menopause and it is midway, you know, because if you think, you know, menopause, so just some definition, menopause is basically um, means cessation of your periods. And we kind of time your, your menopause. It's like a line in the sand. So menopause is said to be 12 months after your final period. So you don't know when your final period is until after it's happened. So we Mm -hmm. kind of say, give it 12 months. And then we know now you're in menopause. The time before that, you're in perimenopause, and that could be up to 10 years before your final period where your hormones are changing, and the time after that is postmenopause. So menopause is really like a line in the sand. Mm. And it to me, I see it as, well, for the majority of us, hopefully we've got at least another 40 years to go. And hopefully, yes. This is, you know, if not more. Yeah, I mean, depending on when you go through menopause, but you know, I'm planning to be here till 100. Yeah, um, so it's kind of a it's a halfway mark. So yeah. this is the opportunity now for women to say, okay, so what do I want in the second half of my life? Now, if mm-hmm. my children are growing up, or whether you've had children or not, you know, you, my children are more independent. Whether you're still with your partner, a lot of a lot of relationships break down at this time mm-hmm. of life too, because women start to realise yeah. that they want something different to their partners. Yeah, and things go different or the relationship will change it doesn't have to break down but this is the time for you to really start to love yourself and give to yourself first because you've given to everybody else Mm. from the time you were young we were taught that as women that we were the carers this is what we had to do and and society continues to you know basically show that to us that we give up what we want for other people, for the sake of children, for the sake of parents, for the sake of a partner, yeah. for the sake of a job, for the sake of whoever else, we have been taught that that's what we do. This time of life, we have an opportunity to go, hang on. We, I mean, you can continue to give, give your life away, but you could also go, no, this is my time mm. and now I'm going to do it for my sake. Mm. And, and that to me is the most marvellous thing about menopause Apart from, you know, we can deal with the physical stuff and we can talk about that in a minute, but it's really stepping into the wisdom of who you are and knowing that this is now your time to shine. Mm. And that's, to me, what menopause is all about. It's about stepping into your wise woman years. And I use the term MAGA, Mm. MAGA, M-A-G-A, 
um, as opposed opposed to what Donald Trump uses, he uses it mm. as an acronym. But it is a word. It's a Sicilian word that means wise woman. Mm. So I call it stepping into your Margot stage of life or your wise woman stage of life. It's almost a celebration in a way. Look, no more periods. You know, you don't have to worry about the monthlies. And it's actually no, very pregnancy. liberating. Exactly. Yeah. It is. But for many women, yeah. it's also a sense of loss. And that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Losing, because when we start, when we don't have our period, now, whether or not you ever wanted to have children again or not, there yeah. is a sense of loss of fertility. Yeah. There's a loss of who you are because our society basically reveres youth and it celebrates fertility. Yeah. It celebrates women who are able to have babies and to yeah. continue to reproduce. And to have I mean, them easily. And to have them easily yeah. because I can see a lot of struggles with my own, you know, clients that, yeah, it's not easy for some women. Same with menopause. Some That's people right. have it. Easily they'll go through it with ease and others will struggle for, for many years with it. Correct. And a lot of that's our social conditioning. Yeah. And when we can rewire, and you're being an NLP practitioner, I'm one of them too, that's in there somewhere as well. <laughs> when we can rewire those belief yeah. systems. Exactly. And we stop listening to what society tells us that we're supposed to be doing in the next stage of our life. Yep. Society basically writes women off for the second half of their lives. We have no value because yep. as a human race, our value was in reproduction. Yeah. We can no longer reproduce. So then there's that loss of who we are. And there's also, we start to, we look older. We don't look young. We don't, yeah. look, you know, we don't have yeah. the nice slim body. And then we've got all the changes that are going on with our hormones because mm. our hormones will change. Mm. They have to change because we're no longer having releasing an egg every month. We're no longer having yeah. a period yeah. every month. We don't want hormones where they were before Yeah. because they supported a reproductive system. Mm -hmm. A reproductive system doesn't work anymore, so we do need to bring the hormones down. doesn't mean they have to stop completely, mm. but we do need to bring them down. And that's what the body does really, really well if we let it. Yeah. So what are your tips and sort of leading up in that perimenopause? Because, you know, people think, oh, 50, they're sort of reaching their mid forties, early, uh, late forties. And they go, oh no, you know, the big M word is coming up. You know, what can people do to transition? And especially if they've seen their mums or go through, you know, sort of really bad menopause symptoms, they think they're going to take on the same sort of symptoms. What are some tips that people can do to try to, you know, have that transition period being really smooth and, you know, minimal disruption and, and the hormones all balanced and moving through that that 12 to 18 month period with ease and, and grace okay well I have five steps that I take my my clients through and look this is these are not rocket science honestly they're not rocket science but they make such a difference yep. one is eat the eat eat well now as a personalized health coach I actually get down to the specific foods that are required for each mm. different person so but start with eating well you know, what does eating, eating well look like? Yeah, people think eating well. Then you know, you ask them like, "Oh, yeah, I eat well." And then when you sort of nut down into their diet, it is not well at all. But they think it's well in their mind. Yeah. So it's getting rid of the processed foods, yeah. avoiding things, the inflammatory foods, which are gluten, sugar, dairy, red meat for some. Alcohol is a big one now. Alcohol is a massive one because women over the age of forty-five in Australia are the largest consumers of alcohol. Wow. Even so, more than men. Think, That's surprising. Yes, even more than men. So we need to, because once again, it is, it's a societal thing. I'm stressed. I'm going to have a glass of yeah. wine to wind down and then I'm going to have two yeah. glasses and then I'm going to have three glasses. Yeah. Alcohol is one of the big, if you're experiencing hot night sweats and waking between 1 and 3 a.m. Now, you know this being a Chinese yeah. practitioner. Yeah, liver time. The liver, liver time. time. Liver screaming you know, out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you drink, if you're having a glass of wine to calm down and then you're waking up with night yeah. sweats, it's the alcohol that's causing that. Mm, alcohol, exactly. all those inflammatory foods, alcohol, sugar and all that, one of the common um, symptoms that women experience that even I did, I experienced this, this is my worst symptom, and I didn't know it was associated with menopause, is joint aches and pains, mm. is inflammation. Mm. Because... Estrogen is a natural anti-inflammatory. Mm. So it protects us. So when we're in our reproductive years, and this is what we're going to know that our hormones protect us. So when we're in our reproductive years, hormones provide that level of protection so that we can continue to do our reproductive stuff because that's what the body was designed to do. But 
once we start to lose the protection of estrogen, whatever we've been up to in the foods we've been eating and the things we've been doing starts to show and that's what physical symptoms are. So yeah. body aches and pains, particularly around the joints, is a very common symptom mm. of women as they're coming through menopause. And it is related to the inflammation that's going on in your body. So we need to drop that those inflammatory foods out. And for everybody, the inflammatory foods will be different, yeah. but the five I just gave yeah. you is the key ones. That's right. And yeah. then to replace them, we need to increase our vegetable intake, yeah. our plant intake, because most people are not eating enough fruit, yeah. veggies, and plants. So we need to mm. bring them up. So we lessen the inflammatory stuff, bring up the plant foods. And it doesn't mean you have to be a vegan or a vegetarian. Yeah. Mm. Just means you need more plants in your diet. Now, some yeah. body types go really well on a vegetarian diet. Others need more protein and they need more carbohydrates. So that depends on your individual body type. And that's what I do with personalized health. But we also need to be making sure that um, we're drinking enough water. We mm. also don't need to be eating quite as much if we're not cycling. Yes. So when we're cycling, we need the extra energy to produce an egg every month to yeah. build the, the lining of the uterus. So we actually need to drop the calories yeah. back and not be, and I'm not a big one for in calories in and out, but we just need to drop back the consumption of food because most of us are over consuming. Yeah. And now, now that you've lost the protection of your hormones, your body will store fat easier. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm a big fan of the intermittent fasting or sort of, you know, having a late breakfast and a very little yeah. dinner. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need yeah, it. Now I do intermittent fasting, but intermittent fasting doesn't work for everyone. So we That's need right. to be aware of that. So once again, that depends on your body type Yeah. because there are some body types. If you are really tall and lean, yeah. you need to be eating five times a day. Metabolism is faster. Yeah. 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 Or if you're someone who's very heavy, not really not heavy, you've got a lot of muscle so you've got a very muscly body and even solid torso body, yeah right? solid torso yeah you also need to be eating five meals a day because you mm. need to fire and you need to feed all that muscle yeah but women who tend to put on weight um and who, who are bigger and more solid like pear shape sort of pear and apple shape yeah yeah more the apple yeah um but they're very solid so they're yeah. they're, they're bigger bigger women um they will do better because they've got a longer digestive system so they can mm. actually eat intermittent fast and that's mm. yeah, and that's kind of working out everyone's individual health type as to yeah. what works well for them just customizing same, yeah. yeah yeah and that's the same with there's no there's no set you know keto doesn't work for everyone yes. Paleo doesn't work for that's everyone. right this has been something that had me when I was first looking, because I actually put on a lot of weight I've, I've lost um over 15 kilos this year but um, when I've started to eat the way my body requires. But when I was looking and going, well, what's the perfect diet that I can give to my clients that will work for yeah. everyone? There wasn't one. That's Everyone's not. going to do keto. But I tried That's keto. Right. Yeah. I've always used keto in the past and it's always worked. But now that I'm in menopause, it doesn't work. Mm. So your body, body changes. Right. You've got to change with your body. Yeah. Right. Because mm. your hormones have shifted. Once your hormone shifted, your body has changed. And this is why they call this the change. It's one of the things mm. as women we need to understand is your body is not the same body that you had in your 30s. That's it right. It has changed because the hormones have changed. So when the hormones change, they change the way your body functions. Yeah. Your body is now different. You need to treat it differently. Mm. So, yeah. so number one was food. Number two was movement. So once again, it's moving the way that your body needs to move. And, you know, some are good for me. Me going with a big hike in the bush and climbing over rocks, best thing for my body. Mm. Another body is, would be really great to go for a long run. Yeah. I can't do that. So yeah. it's, but you do have to move. Yeah. And movement is important. The other thing is reducing toxins in mm. your life. So we get exposed to so many different toxins you know, from the, everything we put on our face, what we put mm -hmm. in our body, and all of them can cause a hormone imbalance. So we need to start to look at what can we do to bring down the toxic load because, once again, that takes the load off the yeah. liver. Yeah. And then it starts to rebalance the hormones. But, That's you know, right. the cosmetics we're using, even, mm -hmm. you know, the food, that what it's food. sprayed with, there is so much that we're putting, we're being exposed to all of the time. Our bodies yeah. were not designed to live in a 21st century yes, world. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We're exposed to so much different things. 
Um, number four is stress, reducing your stress. And like that, that would have to be the key of everything because stress is physical stress, it's emotional stress, it's mental stress, it's spiritual stress. So mm-hmm. doing the food you eat, the way you live your life, it's everything. Yeah. So bringing stress down kind of starts to, it encompasses everything. And the f- number five, and this is probably, re- well, I, I would say it's the most important, but um, but stress is important. Oh, they're all important. How can I say yeah. that? They're, they're all interlinked. We're all, we have to right. be, yeah, that's right. It's our mindset. Yeah. It's our beliefs sure. around aging. What have For we been sure. taught? About, you know, and if your mother struggled through menopause, yeah. you're probably going to have a belief that menopause is going to be yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, If that's you right. believe menopause is going to be hard, it is going to be hard. Yeah. So we need to start switching some of our belief systems because there are cultures and societies in the world who do not even have a word for menopause. Mm. They do not experience menopause. They have no idea, no concept of what menopause is. It's like one day the period's here, the next day it's gone. And it's like, it's oh, right. okay, it's disappeared. That's right. But in the Western world, yeah. we're always looking Label. for... Labels. The labels, we're looking for the worst case scenario. Yeah. And everyone's out there sharing their worst stories. <laughs> it's really hard. And this is something I want to change, is I want to sh- change it to when women sharing their great stories. Yeah. How yeah. they're thriving in this time of life. Because but when you start looking after yourself... You will thrive. My clients have massive results. Oh, huge! And yeah. Did, you know, we do twelve-week program, mm. and no, I mean, they they come in wanting to lose weight. Most mm. of them come in wanting to lose weight. By the time they finish, they understand more about who they are. Yeah. They have a real purpose. There, any other symptoms they had have gone. The weight has dropped off. And now they know who they are so they can step into those wise years. Yes. And guide you can others. share and pass that. That's right. Pass the button yeah. down to your children and those around you. No, I think, yeah, I think what you've said is really true because people think, oh, I'm going to my 50s and it's menopause and it's a scary time and it's all downhill, but it doesn't have to be. For a lot of no. people, it can be uphill and it could be the best next 40 years of your life. You know, you could have oh, so well, much energy. That. You could do whatever you want. You could look, you could have more energy. My mother went through menopause and she had a beautiful transition and she's more energetic and more youthful yeah. than she's ever been in her late 60s than she was in her 40s. So you yeah. can actually, you know, age very well. Yeah, and that, and that is very, very common within the Asian culture. Mm. And in, um, in Japan, I'm not sure if they yeah. still have the same word in China, I think it's called Kaneki. It means second spring. Yeah, yeah. In Chinese, so it's, it's a similar, yeah. Yeah, it's the mm. second spring. You know, rather than seeing it as dead of winter, this yeah. is the worst time of my life, when you start to see it, if your culture says this is the best time of your life, this is yeah. your It's a new rebirth. beginning. It's a new rebirthing, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, they, they take it as, a, as a being a rebirth of, of a yeah. new beginning, of a new chapter in, in, your, in your next half of your life, yeah. exactly. And so. it, it could be a struggle. And, and I always use the analogy of the butterfly, like the caterpillar yes. goes into the cocoon yeah. and to get out to become the butterfly, they have to struggle. They have to break that cocoon. If you go and cut the cocoon open yeah. and just help it yeah. it doesn't develop its wings yeah. so it can't fly and it dies so yes there may be some symptoms but if you look after yourself those symptoms won't be lifelong they will be transient and you'll be able to manage them if you do the five things i said mm. because that's what's strengthening your wings so that that's you can right. just step out and you can fly and when do you say they should be starting those five five things as early as they can i would still, um, i think it's a good idea for your whole for life to... basically whole life yeah starting your teens <laughs> because, starting... I mean, they're, they're basic when i wrote my yeah. book secret mums business for mums who are running their own business and yeah. so it was for mums and children they're the same five things i put in there mm. as well yeah just so that we had different beliefs but really that's just healthy living mm. and but if you start to prepare from your late 30s, early 40s. That's a really good time because yeah. I said before, it can take up to 10 years for your hormones. to They start shifting sometimes up to 10 years before your last period. Yeah. On average, the last period's around about 51, but that's an average. Some are earlier, some are later. So if we start, if we start, go 10 years earlier, so if we start around 40. 41, mm. start to look after yourself yeah. whilst yeah. you're still cycling and making yeah. sure that you've got a regular cycle before you get to this. Yes. Because yeah. you couldn't, ideally what will happen is you'll keep a regular cycle yeah. 
mm. until one day it just stops. Yeah. What happens to a lot of women is they have sporadic cycles. Yeah. They have they go for months and then they start again, or they go out, they start bleed every two or three weeks. That's because hormones are out of balance, mm. and we've got to get over what is normal and what is common. Yeah. What is common or is all these symptoms, all these irregularities, that's common, that's not normal. What is normal is that you have a regular cycle and one day it stops. And then no and symptoms. Go, oh, yeah. That's it. That's mm. normal. And what are some things to support um, that transition? If they finish the menopause, you know, people are on HRT, you know, I'd like to get your opinion on that. And then what other things can people do as a natural form to support that transition so that, you know, they, they have got that um, minimal symptom disruption? Okay, so HRT is just a massive subject in itself. Now, I have got clients who are on HRT, but they're, they're working with me because their aim is to get off HRT. Yeah. One of the things I think we need to really understand is that it is the, nat the body's natural processes for our hormones to drop. That is what they're supposed to do. So we are supposed to lose the hormones when we're no longer having a monthly cycle, we're no longer producing an egg. We've got no eggs, we don't need so much estrogen because the estrogen is what causes the egg to be released. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then progesterone is released from the egg once it's been, once you've ovulated. So we don't need quite as much. We don't need that level of hormone anymore because we are no longer cycling. But as I said, it is very protective. So when we, when it comes down, women start to experience symptoms. So they may, mm. so they go to the doctor and the doctor says, here, let's just put the hormone back again. Yeah. Now that's not solving the problem. Mm -hmm. now, as our hormones naturally drop from our ovaries, so from our reproductive system, the adrenal glands have the ability to produce progesterone and estrogen. The problem is that most women, when they get to this time of life, is they are so exhausted. Their adrenals are overworked. Mm. Now, the adrenals also produce stress hormones like yes. cortisol. Yeah. Now, we require cortisol to stay alive. We don't require progesterone and estrogen to stay alive. So if the body's only got a limited amount of resources because we haven't been looking after ourselves, it will always produce the stress hormones before it's going to produce reproductive hormones. And this is why hormones will yeah. drop lower yeah. than they need to be. So we need to start looking at what can we do to support the adrenal glands yeah. so the adrenal glands can do the job it's meant to do. Mm. Now, there's various herbs, there's various nutrients. I would have to say, I don't like to prescribe a lot of product, but the one nutrient that I say 99.9999% of women require above anything else is magnesium. Yes. Yep. Magnesium I agree. is just like we are so deficient in it. We get yes. very little in our in our Foods. food. I mean, if you're eating lots and lots of veggies, you'll be getting some so long as yep. you're getting it from food that's grown in magnesium. Yeah. Soil. Rich soil. Yeah. We yep. don't have. Yeah. So magnesium and magnesium will help with hot flushes. It will help yeah. with joint pain. It will help with sleep. It will help with stress. Yeah. It will help with just about everything. So um, magnesium, I think just about every woman needs to be on yes. magnesium. Every person, even men, I think they're very stressed yeah, as well these days. <laughs> yeah. So magnesium as a base. Now above yeah. that, it then depends on what's going on. Now, if you're experiencing hot flushes, yes, we've got to look at the diet. We've got to look at the liver, but also look at what, because when we're having hot flushes and we're not 100% sure what the mechanism behind hot flushes is, they've kind of got a bit of a guess, but they think it's to do an imbalance within the what's known as the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamus, adrenal, what do I go, I, uh, and pituitary gland. So there's just a bit of an imbalance, which is throwing the, um, the temperature out of whack. So, but there's some really simple things that can you do. If you're experiencing hot flushes, Avoid the caffeine. Caffeine mm. is an adrenal stimulant. So we need to take the stress off. So if you're drinking, you know, cups of coffee, mm. more than likely you'll go, or even, even green tea. I mean, green tea is great because it's got antioxidants, but if you're experiencing Too many. hot flushes, then stop the green tea and swap it out for peppermint tea. Mm. Because peppermint tea is a really cooling tea. Yeah. So, and you can also get peppermint um, essential oils. You can put it into a roller blend and put it around mm. your neck. Um, clary sage is another really good essential oil, which is yeah. good for balancing hormones. But we need to stop the stress on the body because I ask women often to keep hot flush diaries. It's like keep a diary of when you get a hot flush and see mm. what was it that I ate, what mm. was I doing, what was I thinking, yeah. so you can find out your triggers. So yeah. 
you know, don't eat really, don't eat hot chilies because if you mm. eat hot chilies, you're going to get hot because you're going to yes. get <laughs> Makes so sense. When you go to bed, don't overheat. Now, I'm someone who likes to snuggle up into bed, but I don't experience hot flushes. So it's not a real issue for me. But, you know, mm. don't overload, don't yeah. overheat your body at night. And if having a, um, a warm bath, not a hot bath, but a warm bath before bed and then allowing your temperature to, to drop, drop, yeah. What that does, it does two things. One is it cools your body down, but two, it also triggers melatonin to be released. So melatonin is our sleep hormone. So a drop in temperature will increase melatonin. And I get, yeah, I get my clients to have the last 30 seconds to have a cool shower. That's supposed to be really, yeah. so really helpful. Cool the body yeah. down last 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. Get into, into bed because it triggers the melatonin. It yeah. also just brings the body temperature down, which means Hopefully you're not gonna you're gonna get yeah. a better night's sleep and not gonna have hot, um, night sweats, and that's on the proviso that you haven't been drinking coffee and wine before you go to bed. Mm, yes, so, that's right. The last wine before bed, and then right. yeah. So you know, there's lots. There are different herbs, but yes, the way I see herbs is they will get you through whilst you're doing all of the other work. I don't believe that taking anything for the rest of your life, whether it's HRT or herbs. Mm -hmm. is a good way to go yeah. because what we're doing is we're overriding the body's natural processes. The body knows what to do. Everyone has a, their own inner wisdom. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are very disconnected from our bodies. Yeah. We need to reconnect and start to listen to what it really wants. And, mm. you know, and that's one of the things that when I work with my clients and when we do the group, it's one of the things that come because now I understand they become very intuitive in their eating. Yes, to, yeah, to listen to your I, body. If yes, it's full, stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So many, we aren't listening to ourselves and we'll just go to a doctor, you know, or go to a GP and then expect them to, you know, just here, here you go, here, give me a pill for this or treat me for this. But they're not listening to themselves or their bodies and seeing what they could do and take control, take back that control for huh. themselves. And we, 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 because we have symptoms, we're treating that as if there's something wrong with our body. Yeah. When in fact, when you've got symptoms, that's actually your body speaking to you. That's so right. if you've got any type of symptom, that's that's a message from your body. Mm -hmm. And it's time for you to slow down and go and start to actually listen and say, well, what is it you're trying to tell me? Because yeah. the body will speak to you and it'll start with little niggly symptoms. Yeah. And then you ignore them, stick a Band-Aid on it or whatever, take mm -hmm. a pill. And then if you don't fix the problem, yeah, bigger. then the call will get louder. Yeah. And then it'll get louder. And then it'll, you know, they, the body just keeps getting louder and louder and louder until mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you're in chronic disease on half a dozen, dozen different medications, yeah. can't go bed, and, you know, you're not, not living a quality life. We need to start to listen. So if we've got something going on, what is it? I was once taught by a very old naturopathic doctor, I don't even think he's still alive, that all disease, all symptoms comes from an imbalance. Either too much of something yeah, the body doesn't want, too little. Mm. not enough of what it does want. And we need to switch that. That's right. You know, and that's the same as what you do in Chinese medicine. The, the yin that's and the right. yang. Is yeah, like, that's that right. Balance. It's about hot and cold. It's about the balance yeah. of, yeah, of getting the balance right. Because yeah, it's either excess or deficient. Like you said, it's too much yeah. or too little something. So we yeah. need to bring down the excess and nourish the deficient. Yeah, yeah and that's all that, the body it needs. It's very simple. <laughs> it is very simple if we listen yeah. because and our body right. will tell us. It will tell us that we've got too much of not eating the right foods mm -hmm. or not enough of a certain nutrient. It will yeah. tell us. Yeah. And then it's up to us to go, well, how do I address that? That's because right. The responsibility, and this is something I've learned as a practitioner over the years, because I used to think it was my my responsibility to get people well. And when they didn't get well, I used to stress over that's it. That's right. Yeah. You know, Night after night, I go, what do I, what's, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Actually, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. And this is why I do what I do now is yeah. I educate women. That's I provide right. them with the tools. I and then they go space. out. Yes. I can't do it for them. They've got no. to do the work themselves. Yeah, it's like and I said, NLP, it's not a to-do with process. It's a do with. You're doing it. You're helping yeah. them along and you're holding yeah. their hands and you're guiding them. But it's still up to them to take action and for them That's to right. follow through because you can only educate someone and then it's up to them whether they listen or not. Yeah, and, and a pill doesn't yeah. fix it. I can give you a pill. That's right. But if you don't do, the, you know, well, once again, if you don't take the pill, I mean, the number of times I've had people coming back oh, and saying, they don't take the oh, herbs. Those herbs don't work. <laughs> yeah. And you go, oh, so is your bottle finished? Oh, no, it's still three-quarter full. It's like, 
I gave you two weeks worth and you still got it's three still quarters. It's still a month, yeah. <laughs> You've been taking this? It's like, yeah, they will work, but they're still not, they're not the total solution. Yeah. We have to take action. We can yeah. take herbs. We can and that's just one part. Them. Herbs is one part. You've yeah. got so much that's other, like you said, so everything else, it's all like a, a balancing act. You and can't getting take it, herbs and nutrients yeah. to fix up a crappy diet. Yeah. You can't take herbs and nutrients if you're going to sit on your butt on the couch. That's and right. Exactly. Like, yeah. You're not going to lose weight that way. You need to move. You need to eat well. Yeah. You need to, you've got to work between those two ears. Mind and body connection, correct. Totally. Yeah. All right, Angela, are there any last tips you'd like to share with our listeners before we go? Because it's been an amazing conversation. And, you know, I'll put up all the links so you can contact Angela for those out there that would like to get more advice from her. I mean, I can talk on this stuff. Yes, uh, I know. We can talk all day, a couple of days. It's a long topic. The biggest message I want every woman to know is that you already have the wisdom within you. Yeah. It's about, about tapping into it and to just accept that your body is changing. Mm. It, is, it is a different body to what it was before and embrace those changes. Don't fight it because the more you fight it, the worse it's going to be. Mm. Embrace it because this is your wise woman coming out. This is your ability now to really listen to what you've got to say, what's coming from inside of you, and then you can share that with others. So that's probably my biggest message is that this is the best time of your life if you want to see it that way, if you are ready to step into and transform yeah. into the wise woman that you were meant to be. Exactly. Yes. Wonderfully said. Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much for all your tips. And it was a beautiful Thank conversation. You. And I'm sure we'll chat again soon. But yes, yeah, so for everyone out there, Angela's got a free ebook, which I'll put the link up there. So yeah, I'm sure she'd share some more tips in the ebook with you. So I'll post that up in the links. And I'll thank you so link much. To that actually. Do you want the link? Sorry, I forgot to I'll show post you the link. it up. No, I'll post it up on the okay. on the website. But um, yeah, well, thank you so much for your time today, Angela. And we'll speak again soon. Thanks for listening, everyone.